In this video, I'm going to talk about the idea of the discriminant. The discriminant is related to the quadratic formula. So anytime you have your quadratic in x squared plus bx plus c equals 0 form, first thing, you, of course, you have to get your uh, a, everything equal to zero before you can really do it. What you're looking for is solutions, of course. If you could factor it, you would factor it. If you graph it, you look for where it crosses that x-axis and that whole thing. Now, one of the components that you need to be aware of is the idea uh, that the a portion of the quadratic formula, which is, of course, opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, over 2a. This is your standby method to factor a quadratic if you don't have one that's easily factorable. So you can find your solutions. You can get to a form that you can use. So this can still help you even when you can't easily factor it out. The interesting thing about it is the part that's under the square root here. That's the part we're concerned about right now. The b squared minus 4ac actually give us an, gives us a number that will help us to uh, say something about the type of solution before we even do the problem. And this is referred to as the discriminant. Because it can help us discriminate whether uh, what type of answer choices we're looking for. There's three possible choices that we could have. The first is that uh, this b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. When that is the case, you'll have two solutions, two real solutions. So when you graph it, you'll get something that looks like a parabola, and it'll cross here and cross here. That's your two solutions. If it is equal to 0, you only get one real solution. So you're sort of touching down right there and that's it. Uh, in the situation in which the discriminant is less than zero, then you're looking at a whole other world uh, from what you had before. The reason that it's so different is because when it's less than zero, you're looking at something that never even touches it. So I can't say that it has uh, solutions um, either way. So this is a no real solutions scenario. What you'll end up with instead usually are imaginary solutions. Depending on your level, that would be something with an I in it. Uh, you, depending on the level you're at when you're watching this, it may mean that's something to you or not, but usually it's imaginary solutions if the discriminant is less. So let's do a couple and see if we can use the discriminant just to determine what types of answers we should get. It's a nice way to check. I should say. So in this one, uh, I'm going to identify A, B, C. First off, that'll make it easier. And they want to know what is the discriminant and what does it say about it. So A, B, and C. Uh, so I want to do B squared minus 4 times A times C. So that would be 8 squared minus 4 times 8 times 2. If it was minus 2, I would put times negative 2 there, just so you know. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a answer there where it's 64 minus 64 or 0, which means I can say that this will have one real solution. One real solution because my discriminant is 0. Now, from here, to go up a, a level in terms of difficulty, what I might do, and not that that was you know, supremely difficult or anything, but uh, uh, in this case, by the way, A would be negative 1, just so you know. That one was already set up to work. This one I have to do a little bit of adjustments before I go ahead and uh, find my discriminant, so I need to subtract 9 from both sides. And I'll get negative 3k squared plus 6k minus 3 equals 0. Because if it's not equal to 0, you can't really say anything about it. You can't form a discriminant anyway. So here's A, B, C. I always write uh, the formula down. B squared minus 4AC. So uh, 6 squared minus 4. A is negative 3. C is negative 3 as well. So I end up with uh, 36 
minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is 36. Once again, I'm looking at one real solution and my discriminant value is zero. But the issue with this problem is that uh, I had to make sure that my numbers were, or that my original equation is set equal to zero, because if it's not, you can't find a discriminant. So move it over. Hopefully this next one isn't zero, because I'm kind of, you know, done with that a little bit. Uh, in this case, I'm going to move the 6 over, so I end up with negative 2 m squared plus 7m minus 6 equals 0. If you need to see this, you should do that on your paper just so you, I mean, how much extra time does it take? Not very much. So ABC, write the formula down, b squared minus 4ac. Uh, so that would be 7 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times negative 6. So in this case I'm dealing with 49 minus 48. So I get a discriminant value of 1 and since it's greater than 0 I have two real solutions. Now the discriminant can't tell you what they are. You'll have to continue forward with a quadratic equation or factoring or something to figure out what it is, but it can tell you that yeah, you have two real solutions to get there. Uh, one more I think, and I'll feel like that's a quirky one. In this case you want to, um, just a quick aside, you'll want to bring this over I will end up with negative 8x squared plus 4x, and then you're going to have to put plus 0 there, which will change the, uh, the setup that you have, but, you know, whatever it has to be, that's how that one is set up. Here's a good one to end on. I'm trying to get one that should, could show you uh, no real solutions. So in this case, I could... Uh, go ahead and move these two over if I want, but what I'd rather do is just move this minus 7n over, so I get plus 7n squared. Because then it's equal to 0. The, uh, the nature of an equal sign is it works the same way no matter what side you're on, so I can go ahead and do the discriminant now. Um, my a, b, and c are there. So negative b in this, or b squared, sorry, b squared minus 4ac. I was thinking about the quadratic formula. Uh, so negative 2 gives me parentheses, and then minus 4 times 7 times 1. So this gives me 4. And make sure when you do your negative squared, you do put that negative uh, 2 in parentheses, because otherwise the calculator will kick it out wrong if it's one you don't already know. I mean, uh, it's not this, for instance. That's something else. This means 2 times 2 uh, times negative 1. So make sure you put it in parentheses when you square it. That makes sure you get the right answer. Anyway, minus 28 will give you negative 24. Since it's less than 0, I know that I have no real solutions. And I might say that I have two imaginary ones. So depending on where you are, you can choose the answer that best meets your needs. But that's it. Uh, discriminant, not too difficult, but it just has its own little quirks to it that you might want to uh, try out a little bit. It'll give you a preview of what your answer might be.